In lesson nine, we're gonna be looking at cylinder volumes. So this is on page 265. So let's take a look at these two solids. Think about what information you would need to calculate the volume of each solid. And what is the same and different about how you would find the volume in each solid? So just pause the video, answer those two questions, and then come back. So what would we need in order to calculate the volume? We'd probably need some measurements. Okay, maybe you'd need the height. Okay, probably need a radius here because you're going to want to be calculating the area of the base. Here you'd need to know kind of the length and width of the base and then including that height. Volume formula is area of the base times the height. So maybe you said I want to know the area of the base instead of some of the lengths. What's similar and different? Um, well, the area of a cylinder um, base is a circle. So the base is a circle. So area of that is going to be pi times the radius squared. And the circle is definitely the base here. Where this rectangular prism, any of these sides are rectangles. So any of them could be the base. And the area of the base is just the length times the width. And any could be considered the base. All right, then here are those two shapes again, those two solids with measurements given. So suppose the prism, okay, not the cylinder, but the prism, suppose the prism has um, water in it that reaches a height of one centimeter. So draw a representation of this situation on your diagram. So go ahead and draw in water that reaches one centimeter high. So maybe you did something like this. Okay, maybe you didn't draw the back side of it. So maybe you did it just in the front here, something like this and around the side and said that was the water. So then suppose we take this water and we pour it into this cylinder what will the height of the water be in this cylinder? So how far up the cylinder will this water reach when we pour it in? So go ahead and pause the video, try that, and then come back. So there's a few different ways you maybe tackled this. Um, maybe you figured out what the volume of this water was. Okay, so volume of the water. And you said, all right, so the area of the base times the height. So the base area here is 4 pi times 9 for the base of that water. And then the height of the water was 1 centimeter. So then you maybe got 36 pi. You could have even done pi as 3.14. And then centimeters cubed for that volume. So here's the volume of the water. And so then you maybe wanted to work backwards. So now you know the volume that you have. So volume equals area of the base times the height for this shape as well. But now we know the volume of the water that we're pouring in. We can find the area of the base of this shape because it's pi times the radius, which is six squared. And then we don't know how high up the water is gonna go. So then we could calculate this backwards. So 36 pi equals, and then six squared is 36 pi times the height. And then you could have divided by 36 pi. Whoops. So 36 pi divided by 36 pi is one and gotten that that would also reach one centimeter in the cylinder. Okay, so if we knew that this volume was 36 pi, when we pour it in here, it's going to reach one centimeter as well. So that's one way you could have tackled that. Okay, another way, so let me just duplicate this page. 
Um, so maybe you actually looked at calculating the kind of volumes of each shape first. So maybe you were looking at this and you had done, all right, so six, so you did area of the base here was pi times six squared. So you got 36 pi for this. And then over here, the base area of this, you did nine times four pi. And you saw that that base area was 36 pi as well. So then maybe you reasoned that if both base areas are the same, if the area of the base times the height is the volume and your base areas are the same and your volume is the same because your volume is the water, so the volume represents the amount of water and the water doesn't change in volume when we move it into the other one. So if they have the same base area, then they're gonna go up the same height, okay? because everything else is the same. So then maybe you reasoned that the heights had to be equal that way. So that would have been another way you could have tackled that problem. And there's likely more ways that you could have tackled it as well. So suppose that the prism, um, the prism contained water that reached a height of three centimeters instead of one. So now suppose that this water was up higher Okay, and it reached three centimeters up instead of one. If we pour it again into the cylinder, what's going to be the height in the cylinder? So if we think about the fact that the base areas are the same again, so we know that now this volume has changed, but it's the same when we pour it in one to the other, the base area is the same, so the height is going to be equal. So it should go up, if this is the water, should reach up to three centimeters again. Since the volume of the water will be the same when we dump it in, base area is the same, so it should go up the same height. All right, then if you take a look on page 267, um, go ahead and try and sketch the solids or describe each solid and find the volume when each of these two-dimensional shapes is rotated around this axis. So find the volume of the solid created by these blue shapes. Sketch it on the graph or describe what is created. Then try to find the volume. Then come back. All right, so um, we saw this one earlier when we did um, rotational um, figures. So this one, when we rotate it, kind of is like two cylinders on top of each other. Okay, so you end up with rotating it around there. So let me just get a sketch of this on here quick. So then this kind of comes down here, whoops. And then you'd also have this rotating twice. Okay, so you kind of get this kind of two cylinders stacked on top of each other. So if we're gonna find the volume, we're probably finding the volume of this, this top one and then this bottom one. So remember that volume equals area of the base times the height. And we've got two cylinders, so I'm just gonna write in both of those. So area of the base, it's a circle. So the area formula is pi times the radius squared. So in this case, pi times two, because the radius is two squared, and then times the height. So if we look at the height here, that's one, two, three units high for that part. Then we can do this bottom cylinder. So again, the area is gonna be pi times the radius. So look at this radius, one, two, three, four, five squared. And then the height of this one, one, two, three. So then we can add those together. So there's a couple ways you could do this. You could leave this in your calculator. You could do this in your calculator as a decimal. 
you can do what's called leaving it in terms of pi. So just multiplying out the two squared times the three. So four times three is 12 and then just leaving a pi there. And then same thing over here. So five squared is 25 times three is 75 pi. And then since these both have a pi, it acts like a variable, so we can combine these. So how many pi's do we have? We have 87 pi for the volume of that shape. And then units cubed. And then you could certainly type that into your calculator as well um, using the pi button or 3.14. And you would get approximately 235.6 units cubed. Then we could do a similar thing for this second one. Now this one is gonna get you a kind of cylinder with a cutout, right? So we're gonna be, um, you're gonna have this one go out to the edge. And then you're also gonna have a cylinder on the inside there. Okay, so we're gonna have a cylinder inside that's being cut out of the wider cylinder. So now instead of adding kind of a volume on top of another one, now we're gonna be subtracting some volumes because we're gonna be subtracting this inner volume from the outer volume. So now we wanna take a look at this bigger cylinder. Okay, still area of the base times the height. And now we're gonna subtract off the area of the inside one times the height, so the volume. So looking at this bigger cylinder and pretending that there isn't a cutout, so calculating this whole volume, the radius here would be one, two, three, four, five. So we'd have pi times five squared. And then the height here is one, two, three, four, five, six. So then this would be 25 times six pi. So 150 pi for the large cylinder volume. Then we wanna calculate this inner cylinder. So pi times and the radius of this inner cylinder is three. And then the height is still six. So now here we have nine times six pi. So we have 54 pi. And then again, we'd subtract. So we're taking the whole thing as if it were solid and then we're subtracting out that middle tube. So you could use your calculator for this to get a decimal. You can also do 150 minus 54, which is 96 with a pi. And then if you did this in your calculator, your decimal version would be approximately 301.6 units cubed. So then let's take a look at these pictures. Which ones could we um, find the volume of given today's lesson? So anything that's kind of a dilation and the cross sections stay the same, we know is volume equals area of the base times the height. So a pencil stays a, hex, um, stays a hexagon all the way through. So we should be able to do this one. This um, kind of bolt is like a cylinder. And then the nut portion um, looks like a cylinder with a cutout, so we should be able to do that. And the stick of butter, again, has a base that stays uniform throughout, so we should be able to do that one as well. So those are all similar to ones that we did in today's lesson. All right, then let's take a look at the lesson summary. So we know that the formula for um, Cylinders and prisms volume. Oops, let me get not a dotted line here. So the formula, so we looked at cylinders and prisms and their volumes, and the formula is area of the base times the height. So remember that big B is the area of the base, and H is the height, which is the distant distance between the bases. So you can look at a cross section here rotationally. If we rotated this, it would give us this cylinder. So we'd be looking at um, area of the base times the height. So height being this five 
looking at the area of the base. And here we need to subtract out this inner portion. So when you're calculating for area of the base of the bigger cylinder, so we see three here, and then we also see one for this inner cylinder. So if we're looking at the big cylinder, the radius would be four, and then the cutout cylinder, we have a radius of one. Calculate the volumes, um, and we'd be able to subtract those. And then you can um, use your calculator. You can also leave it in terms of pi, which is kind of nice to just be able to subtract the coefficients of the pi and not have to worry as much about your calculator. But you certainly can um, use pi as 3.14 or your pi button in your calculator as well.